We're going to look at Revelation chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 9. Revelation chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 9 through 11. The Bible says right here, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, that there's going to be a great slaughter of tribulation saints. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they crowd, cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So you'll notice right here, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, there are tribulation saints getting slaughtered. Now when these saints are getting slaughtered, it's very interesting, where are they slaughtered upon? They are slaughtered upon the altar. So it's going to be very interesting that at the city of Jerusalem, the tribulation saints, they are slaughtered on where? The altar. Now, did you hear that? They're going to be slaughtered on the altar as a sacrifice. You talk about blasphemy. Now, the Bible says that in the last days there shall be doctrines of devils, and 2 Corinthians chapter 2, it says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Now, this is something that you have to watch out because Satan, he's giving wrong doctrines to set up something very demonic at the end, you got to understand. There's a, uh, there's a religion that practices human sacrifices, which we know is very demonic. And that's pretty plain. That's Satanism. Satanism does human sacrifices. Tribulation saints, where are they slaughtered? On the sacrifice. So what does that mean? See, there are, it's going to restore this thing again. Something wicked. You know what Revelation 13 says? Go to Revelation 13. They're going to worship Satan himself. No, yes they will. They will worship Satan himself. Look at Revelation chapter 13. I mean, that's what religion is teaching you nowadays, that God has many different names, right? So because they're teaching you that, that's why it's very obvious that people who worship Jesus, they're going to worship Satan too. No, they can't do that. Yeah, because that's what the world's teaching you. It's brainwashing you that God's name is, can be Jesus, it can be Allah, it can be Buddha, it can be any other God. It's just a God with many different names. So, yeah, of course they're going to do that. Like in Revelation chapter 13. Notice what the Bible says right here. Verse 4. And they worship the who? Dragon. Told you. They're going to worship Satan. They will worship Satan. Human sacrifices will be restored. Now, I mentioned to you before, beware of doctrine of devils in the last days, right? Now, when you talk about human sacrifice in Satanism... Obviously, people will know, oh, that's bad. But for some weird reason, when it comes to this religion right here about human sacrifice, they're like, oh, no, it's not satanic. It's not evil. Strange, is it not? Strange? No, pastor, it's not. Yeah, because you know what Catholicism teaches? It teaches that the people in the church audience, they are literally eating human body and human blood. That's not satanic. Oh, but you just replace it with different words, right? So it's not satanic. We're eating the literal body and blood of Jesus. Oh, it's not that satanic. But let's translate that, all right? Come on, let's translate it. Translate it as we're eating human bodies and human blood in our church. Now, when they say stuff like that, they get arrested, wouldn't they? The church would be demonized. People would avoid it. But for some weird reason, this is the number one religion of the world. Some strange reason. Huh. See what Satan can do? You can be... See, he can get people to do something demonic. You just replace it with nice words. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you can do something demonic, satanic. Yes, yes, and yes. Now, the question is this. The question then is, if they believe in human sacrifice where they eat and drink human blood and human body, Satanism does that do to receive power? Here's a question. Tribulation saints are offered on sacrifices. Now use your head. What do you do with sacrifices? Mm -hmm. You eat and drink it. This is occurring at the temple in Jerusalem. You know what they do with sacrifices at the temple? You eat. You eat the sacrifice. That's what you do. 
You eat the sacrifice. You partake it. But then, what does Satanism does? What does uh, Catholicism does? They believe in partaking in the blood. That's something really demonic right there. And God, He doesn't believe in that. He believes all blood is corrupt. The only blood that matters is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanseth us from all sins. That's what mattered. Let's also look at the book of Revelation, chapter 16, and Ezekiel 39. Revelation 16, and Ezekiel 39. We're going to look at Revelation 16, and Ezekiel 39. Now, some of the people, they might go, Oh, that's too much of a stretch, Pastor. I don't think that's true. Well, think about it. It's, it's very logical it can happen. One, what is one of the four horsemen of Revelation? It's famine, right? What are you going to do when you're starving? But then when you slaughter thousands and thousands, you got plenty of meat. You know what's really scary too? I also heard that human meat can be surprisingly pretty good. So when you're starving to death and that meat tastes really good, you don't think people, uh, you don't think people are going to eat that? They would eat it. They would eat it. If you're starving to death, you don't know what you're capable of doing, man. God forbid, but me and Sean might be stranded in the middle of a desert. We don't know what we'd be capable of doing either. When you're starving to death and going insane. See, so it's very logical. The second thing is this. Look at those two verses. What did God demand? Revelation 16 and verse 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are what? Worthy. See, they're going to reap what they sow. Why? Because they did something with the blood of saints. So God, in return, Give them that blood to drink when he pollutes their waters. But not only that, let's look at Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39, verse 17. Verse 17. What does God do at Armageddon? At Armageddon, he wipes out the enemies who killed the tribulation saints on the altar. But he shows his slaughter as something as reaping what they've sown. Just like Revelation 16 we looked at. For they are worthy. They were reaping what they sown, what they did with blood. But it's the same thing right here. Look at Ezekiel 39, verse 17. And thou son of man, thus saith the Lord, speak unto every fowl, feathered fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come, gather yourselves on every side to my what? Sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams of lands and of goats of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. You know what God called that? God called human flesh and blood of the wicked as what? Sacrifice. Why? Because he's judging them in wrath. Why? Because they did something to make him angry. They had a polluted sacrifice. And see, God was giving them flesh and blood to drink of that sacrifice. Why? Because... He's a God of sowing and reaping, right? He believes in that strongly. That's what they've been doing, see? Reaping what they've sown. But here's something more plain about Catholicism partic participating in this. This is the most plain one. Look at Revelation 17. That's plain. Look at Revelation 17. Revelation chapter 17. And we'll close it. We'll close our Bible study right here, Revelation chapter 17, and we will read the verses 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, 
the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It's interesting how the Bible put that in all caps. <laughs> so you'll see right here, God is definitely not happy, otherwise he wouldn't put that in all caps. Who is Revelation 17? I showed you in many videos, all right? That is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, what did the Bible say that the Catholics will do? They're drinking from a cup, right? You know what that cup is? You know what that cup is? Go to this verse, verse 20. Well, verse 9, excuse me, verse 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Okay, that plainly proves it's Rome. Because Rome is known as a city on the seven hills. So we know that this woman is Rome. But keep reading. Verse 6 now. Verse 6. And I saw the woman, Catholic, right? The Catholic Church, drunken with the what? Blood of the saints. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I what? Wondered with great admiration. See what they're doing? They're drinking blood. They're drinking blood. See what Satan's doing? No, Pastor. I, let's say you're a good Catholic, okay? Oh, I won't, I won't be a cannibal. Listen now. Why would you not hesitate to eat human blood and flesh if you believe that's literally human blood and flesh? Now, th think about this too. Let's use some common sense here. When you're starving to death, and man, you saw that meat, and that meat looks really, really good. And in your Catholic mind, you realize, hey, I've been eating human flesh and drinking human blood all this time, so why not participate in eating human flesh and drinking blood? You won't do it when you're starving? <laughs> and that's when your church does? Not only that, the scriptures show it. If the scripture says so, you can't go against scripture. Sorry. You can't go against that. You know why? This is very plain in the Bible. I didn't show you other verses, but there are verses more plain, like Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13. That's very plain. They're going to literally eat people at the tribulation. And there are many other verses I could have shown, but I didn't show that, like Psalms chapter 79, verse 1 through 3, what do you do with the dead bodies? Uh, Psalms 106, 37, Psalm 16, 4, etc., etc. But here's a simple thing that you got to understand. If they will worship Satan. And Satan receives worship through this sacrifice right here. And the Bible says, Tribulation saints, their martyred bodies are around this altar. What is one of the signs, the rituals of Satan worship, huh? You know what Satan likes, right? You saw it from the beginning of your Old Testament to the end of the New Testament. You see it today. What is his ritual of worship service to Satan? It's human sacrifices. It's eating human flesh, drinking human blood. That is a sign of Satan worship. When you participate in that mass and you're eating human flesh and drinking human blood, you know what that is? That's a sign of Satan worship. The Eucharist and the mass is a sign of Satan worship. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. See, beware of doctrines of devils in the last days. Satan is preparing something.